All right, so here we, uh, here we go. Exercise 220. Uh, somehow we're winding down through the semester rather quickly. Um, but it is what it is. Just FYI, I figured out, <laughs> it's funny how these things th sneak up on you. Next Monday's a holiday, so we don't have class next Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, didn't realize that. And thought we probably had class and my daughter was going to get off. But no, actually, we have the day off. It's shocking. So um, anyway, that is what it is. So only one day. And then, and then the next week is Thanksgiving. So it's crazy. However, it doesn't really impact this class because we have Monday and Wednesday. We don't get the time off. So I'll be teaching Monday and Wednesday, even though only about half of you won't, will show up on the Wednesday of Thanksgiving week. It's average. But yes, we do have class on that Wednesday. So you get next Monday off, but we have class the following Wednesday the day before Thanksgiving. Um, so the truth is that I think the next three or four lectures are pretty fun, because this is where we get to actually learn to do night renderings. And everybody always wants to do the night renderings. And they're always the super pretty ones that, that uh, work out. There's a lot of variables that go into making a good night rendering. We will talk at length about them. Before we can really do night renderings, though, we have to talk about putting lights and installing lights and understanding how lights work in V-Ray. Uh, so today is all about lighting and lights. And I'll talk about various types of lights and how we create the light fixtures to hold the lights and, and that sort of thing. Um, and then next class, we will bring our lights in to the interior of our scene and do a daytime rendering with the lights in and turned on. Uh, and then we will move on into the night rendering. So you still have a fair amount of time to keep working on your model. Um, the, the geometry that you're going to be creating today isn't the most complicated in the world. You will have plenty of time to work on your project still, too. So I'm kind of building that into this today. Um, because, like I said, the semester uh, is quickly approaching the end. So we need to make sure we get through everything uh, as best we can. So um, when I start initially talking about lights and lighting in Rhino, uh, a couple things that are that's imp kind of conceptually important for you guys to know, and that is that there are two different things that we're going to create. There is the light fixture itself, and then there is the V-Ray light that actually does the lighting of the scene. The light fixture is the geometry that holds the light bulb, so to speak. So if we were in this room and we looked back at uh, those fluorescent lights on the ceiling, as ugly as they are, if we were modeling this room, we would have to create that thing to hold the light. And then we would also be creating a V-Ray light that actually would be lighting the scene. So there's two different elements that always work to create our lights in the first place. I'm going to start today by creating a very simple light um, that would mimic like what a cam light would look like on the ceiling as an illustration of one of these light fixtures. And then I will bring it into a block, as a block, into a scene where I will install a V-Ray light. The other important thing for you to know is that the V-Ray lights should only be inserted in the final scene where the rendering is going to occur. So on your um, retreat renderings, the lights themselves, the V-Ray lights, are going to be installed in the final rendering file, the master site file, not in the block that's coming in. So the V-Ray lights only get in the final file. That's it. Uh, the geometry, however, is made in its own files. So I have a brand new um, uh, Rhino file open here. I, for whatever reason, it's in um, millimeters. So I need to switch it into inches. Now that it's in inches, I need to start creating the geometry. This particular uh, geometry is going to go on a ceiling. So I'm actually going to draw it kind of upside down. Um, so that I'd be looking up on it. I'm going to start at the origin when I create it. And it's going to be rather simple. I do care a lot about my layers because it's going to come in as a block. So I'm going to start by renaming the default layer. I will call that layer uh, Canlight. And then I will go ahead and start to create the geometry. So first off, I will, I will come in here. I'm going to use this tube standard primitive. I'll go at 0, 0 as my base point here. My diameter is going to be based on my can light. So we would say that my uh, can light is 6 inches. And my wall thickness of this, um, I don't know, is maybe an inch. That's essentially the trim that goes around it. Never mind. 
let's do that one more time. Sorry, I misread it. Zero zero to start. There we go. Uh, diameter is six. Um, I had to click on wall thickness to do one. And then I'm going to go negative 0.25 inches for the trim. And I should have made it solid. See? See how these things never work for you, right? Oh, it did make it solid. Never mind. We're all good. But I ended up going down because this is going to go up on the ceiling. So that's the important thing is I'm building down. So this little piece would be the trim that goes around the light fixture. In reality, it might be a little bit thinner. The other thing that might happen is the edges might be, you know, have a bevel on them. So if I was really getting technical about this, I could spend some time working on that. So I could chamfer uh, the edges. My distance might be 0 0.0625. And I could chamfer. No, it doesn't like me to do it anyway. I might have to explode it. Try it one more time here. Chamfer SRF. Chamfer surface. There we go. No wonder I couldn't select it. No, it doesn't like me anyway. No, nope, doesn't like me. So. The point is, you could spend some time working on the geometry. The last piece that I need is I need to actually create the light bulb itself, the thing that's going to, to look like it's lit up. So for that, I'll come over here to my standard primitives again, and I'm going to do this ellipsoid. I'll start, let me turn on my object snaps, and let me turn on my quadrant snap. And I'll go across there, across there. And my thickness, I will make deep, a uh, quarter of an inch deep. So you can kind of see what it looks like from the underside there. I can trim off the top. So let me use this surface, and we'll trim and get rid of the top, because I don't need that part of the geometry. I just need the underside. So in this particular scenario where I have this can light, I have a couple things. I can have a sublayer for trim. And I can have a sublayer for uh, bulb. So I would take the trim layer and put that on the trim. And I would take the bulb layer and put that on the bulb. Then it's a matter of starting to apply the material. So if I wanted this trim to be white, for example, I would go into my V-Ray materials. And I would load in some kind of white material, or maybe I would load in metal, depending on what it is that I want that trim to look like. Uh, so let me come in here under my um, resources, V-Ray, V-Ray materials. I'll do metal for lack of something better right now, though in all reality, if I were picking it, I'd probably pick, um, let me do, let's do titanium. Um, we'll do a matte titanium. I would probably do white. Apply material to layer, and I'll put it on the trim layer. And so that's fine. I have that. But the next piece of the puzzle is bulb. And how do I, how do I deal with the bulb? And so V-Ray has two different ways of dealing with lights. The first off is the V-Ray light itself, which is going to do the lighting of the scene. The other thing is when we look at a light bulb, or when we look at the lights back in this room, we see the, the light bulb itself. We see the glow of the light. And so V-Ray allows us to create a material called an emissive material, and this material emits light in the scene. It's not strong enough to do the lighting of the scene, but it, when you look at a light bulb in a scene, it will look like the bulb is lit. And so we're going to create that material. So I'm going to go into my V-Ray material editor, and I'm going to create a material. So I'll right click and go to create material and this is going to be a standard material. And I'm going to call this standard material bulb, or light bulb. It would help if I spelled it correctly. There we go. Now, this, by the way, is written out. If, if I lose you along the way, if you go into tutorials and you go to V-Ray, um, emissive material is right here, 8.15. And so this whole thing is written out. 
And I will come back and I will reference these values in just a second because I can't remember these values off the top of my head anyway. So I have the bulb. I'm going to right click on the bulb material and I'm going to say create layer and it's going to be emissive. And so actually before I create that emissive layer, let me show you the difference. So there's my bulb and it's a standard gray material. When I add the emissive layer to it, create layer, emissive, and I preview it, you can see that it turns white and it actually looks like it kind of lights up what's around it a little bit. So this is pure white light, kind of like a really bright white LED. We want to make it a little bit more yellow to make it a little bit more realistic, so we're going to change some of the settings. And I have these written out on the, on the website here, so you can come back to it. We're going to change a couple things. The emissive color is going to be 200, 161, and 82. So I'll come here, I'll go into emissive, I'll look at the color, and I will type in under RGB 200, 151, and 82, if I remember those correctly. 161, sorry. And 82, it's kind of an ugly yellow color, and that's fine. We'll say okay. So that's that. Then we move on to the emissive transparency, which is listed here. It should be 100, 100, 100. That's easy. I can do that. Transparency at 100, 100, and 100. Then we'll come and look again at the diffuse color of 155. So here's my diffuse color. That should be at 155. I'll say OK. And the last piece is the diffuse transparency at 0, 0, 0, which should be what it already is. Yep, it already is at 0, 0, 0. So I have all of those turned on now. And if I preview it, it doesn't look very good. And that's OK. When I preview it, there's a little bit of gold showing up here. However, there's another thing under the emissive that we haven't adjusted yet, and that is something called the intensity. And so right now, this is at 1. But if I increase this value to 2, for example, and I hit Preview, the bulb turns on a little bit brighter. If I increase that value to 3, and I preview it, it gets a little bit brighter. If I turn it to 4, you get the idea here. We're going up. We're, in all likelihood, we're going to turn it up to maybe 100. And it's going to be really bright white. It still has a, a yellowish tint once we finally do the, the scene. But that's a good place to start. So I have the bulb material created, and I'm going to assign it to the bulb layer. So I'll right click on bulb, and I'll say apply material to layer, and we'll put it on the bulb layer there. So I now have my geometry created. I have my trim, and I have my bulb. I could look at it in rendered mode, and it doesn't show me that much because I'm looking on it from the other underside. The other thing to point out is that the emissive material doesn't show up in the rendered preview. You can't see it. I could actually render it, in which case I get a little taste of it, but I have no environment to reflect off of. So other than confirming that the light bulb is lit, I can't really do much more than that. So at this point, I'll go ahead and save it. I'll go to File and then Save As. I want it to be a Rhino model. And I typically keep these in my Resources folder under Rhino, under Rhino Blocks, and then under Lighting. And you can see that I have a bunch of things that I've done before. And so this would be a 6-inch can light. So I'll change this to 6 can light. Say I could actually modify this and say 6 dash can light to be consistent in case I use both the 4 and the 6. I'll go ahead and click Save. And there it is. To test this, we're not today going to bring this all the way into your um, final rendering. I've created a little sample file for you. So if you go to today's exercise, 220, about halfway down, download a sample night environment to try out your light blocks. So if we click that, it's going to download the sample night scene.3dm, which is a Rhino file. We can open that file.
And there it is. Not a particularly inventive scene. We've got a wall, we've got a little roof, and we've got some background. If I were to render this right now, you can't see too much. If you guys render it, you'll see a little bit more. There's a faint, faint shadow as if the moon were out. So there's a little bit of light generically in the scene. And the background's kind of a mottled grayish black color. And that's fine for our purposes today because it lets us try out our renderings. So I have this file, and I'm then going to bring in the geometry of my light, my light fixture, into this scene, the one I just created. So I'll go into Edit. Actually, before I do that, let me go to File and then Save As. And I'm going to put this in today's folder. And what are we on? There we go. There we go. And I'll go to File and then Place, or excuse me, <laughs> Edit, Blocks, Insert Block Instance. And I'm going to go find in my flash drive that file that I just saved. It was in Resources. Rhino, Rhino Blocks, Lighting, 6 Can Light. I'll go ahead and say OK. When I get to this Insert File Options, this is going to be my block definition type is a link. The active layer style is a reference. I'll go ahead and say OK. And if I turn my snaps on, I'll be able to snap to this. Now, if I turned on my center snap, I'd be able to snap hopefully to the center of that object. That doesn't look like it. I'll snap to the corner. Then let me move it in the top view here. And I'll put it back against the wall. There it is in my scene. And if I were to do the rendering right now, not much would change. Other than if I looked up at the light, I'd see a little tiny bit of the light glowing. And so light, even though the preview shows it as pure white, this shows it as a little bit of a yellow tint. Even you guys on the projector can see that it has a little bit of a yellow tint. It's not, however, enough to light the scene. It's, it won't work for the scene lighting. And so to do that, I need to create a V-Ray light in the final rendering scene, which is this scene. I don't currently have my V-Ray toolbars loaded. It's very helpful to load those before you do lighting because there's a lighting toolbar. So I'm going to go into my tools. I'm going to go to my toolbar layout. I'll go to File and then Open so that I can go find the V-Ray toolbar. There it is that we downloaded that very, I think it was the second day of class. And I'll say OK. And there's my V-Ray toolbar. This is good because now I have other types of lights. Thus far, we've used the basic directional light. And we've used the sun, but we haven't touched any of the rest of these lights. This is what we're going to start working with today. The one that I'm going to start with is the spotlight right here. And I want to create a spotlight. So I'll click on the spotlight tool. Uh, actually, before I do that, let me go into my layers here. Let me create a new layer. And I'm going to call this layer, um, let's call this lights. And I'll do a sub layer for can lights. And it's helpful to do this ahead of time because then you can select all the can lights separate from all the rectangular lights or separate from all the point lights. Let me make that the active layer. There it is. And now I will go to the Spotlight tool. So I'm going to click on the Create Spotlight tool. It's going to ask me for the base of my cone. Let me zoom in here and snap to the center of that light fixture. Next thing it does is ask for a radius. I prefer diameter myself, so I click on diameter instead. And I'm going to set my diameter at 2 feet. Then I get to the end of cone. And in this case, I want the coin, cone to be pointing straight down. So I'm going to move into the front view or the right side view, either one. And I'm going to type in 1 foot. And I'm going to hold down Shift so that it goes straight up and down. You could turn ortho on. Because I don't have ortho on, that's when I held down shift. If I had ortho on, then it would do it automatically. Either way works. And I'll create it. So what I created here for a light 
is a diameter of two feet and a height of one foot. The ratio is the part that matters, two to one. Or if you wanted to do radius to, to height, it would be one to one. Depends on how you want to do it. I'll show you what the difference is in a second. The other thing about V-ray lights is they cannot be contained within or inside an object. So I need to take this light and I need to move it down so that it's just a little bit below my actual light fixture. I could get it closer if I wanted. Uh, you know, I could zoom really far in and work to get it right up there, but it just needs to be ballpark. That's fine. And if we look at it in the render view here, there it is, we see the light and we see the light fixture there as two separate objects. With the light itself selected, I'm going to go to the properties and I'm going to choose the light properties. And this is going to give me information about the light itself. Now, maybe or maybe not this will happen to me as the, during the course of me uh, working today on these, but V-Ray, uh, okay, let, let's, let's look at it this way. Have you ever gone to the store because you needed a new light bulb and you bought a new light bulb and you came home and you screwed it in and it was broken? Anybody have that happen? It didn't work? Yeah, so V-Ray likes to play the same game sometimes. So sometimes you get a light bulb that's just bad. It is what it is. It happens maybe once every 25 light bulbs. Maybe once every 50 light bulbs. I can't predict when it's going to happen, but it will happen to you at some point. It will happen to me at some point. Um, when that happens, you'll look over here and these will all read zero. There won't be any values in your light properties. That means it's dead. If that happens to you, delete the light, create a new light, and you should be fine. Like I said, don't know why, but it does happen. So I like to tell you that in advance. Uh, hopefully it'll happen to me so you can see me have to go through it. Anyway, we need to adjust the light properties itself. So I've, I have the light selected. In my properties window here, I click on the light. First off, it is enabled. I'm going to move this over so we get, can see everything all at once. Next thing, I'm moving to the intensity. I need to adjust the color. Right now it's set for just plain white. We need to again add a little bit of a yellow tint to it. Um, 255, 214, and 170 is an ideal tint for us. It is written out, by the way, um, in your handout under step four, those numbers. So those numbers I have memorized. Uh, 255, 214, and 170. I'll go ahead and say OK. And that gives me some color to the light. Next thing is intensity. I'm not going to adjust this value in until I change the units below. If you're, if you're really good with these units, some, some of these might mean something to you. For me, the only one that's really relevant that I can think of is the radiant power or watts. And the reason that this is relevant is because it's very similar for a spotlight and for a point light to a regular light bulb. So if I change it to radiant power watts and I change the intensity, for example, to 40, that would be the equivalent of a 40 watt light bulb. We all kind of know what a 40 watt light bulb is like. 60 watt, 100 watt, etc. It just seems to make it a little bit easier to understand. If you want to work in the other units, you can. I just don't know what they mean, so I can't advise you on that. So I've changed it to watts. I've changed my intensity to 40. Next thing we do is we come down into our options. Under decay, we're going to switch to inverse square because that mimics what real light does. So we'll switch uh, decay to inverse square. Uh, and the rest of these options are all just fine. Once all of those are set, we can go back and re-render our scene. And when we do that, we should be able to see the light itself and then the, the shadow and the light cone that is cast on the wall. The further away this spotlight and block are from the wall, the further down the wall the cone will be. So if I were to re-render this here, you can see that the cone is much softer and much further down the wall. With all of these renderings, you may find that you need to go back into your V-Ray options and you need to go into camera and adjust the physical camera's shutter speed. 
it's set at 200, the lower your light is, the lower the camera has to go. It's just like shooting a, an, a camera inside a dark room. If you don't have enough light, you have to change the shutter speed or put some more lights on. Likewise, the shape of the cone of our light matters. So I'm going to move this for a second up closer to the wall. I'll move it over. I'll take my block and I'm going to copy it next to it. I'm going to create another light this time here with different proportions for my spotlight. I'll come over to spotlight. Same strategy here. It's going to be snapped to the center. And this time, oops, I thought it was going to be snapped to the center. There we go. This time, under my diameter, I'm going to pick four feet. And I'm going to keep the same one foot of height. So I'll type one foot for the height. There it is. I need to move that so once again it doesn't intersect into the geometry. Then with it selected, I'll come over and do all the same properties here. Color, 255, 214, and 170. Units are going to be in watts. Intensity is going to be 40, so it matches. The, uh, decay is going to be inverse square. There we go. I'm going to switch back this into my render view. So set camera, oops, sorry, set view, render one. And we will render this again. And so with my first example, with my proportions of a one foot diameter and a one foot of height, you can see where the cone ends up on the wall and that it's a sharper, narrower cone. In the second example here, I have a wider cone. Therefore, the arc on the wall becomes much wider, and it distributes the light much wider. The opposite would be the case if I created uh, a different light that was narrower. So let me delete this wider light, and I'll create one that's narrower. So same thing, only this time my diameter, we will say, is 6 inches. And my height is still going to be the 1 foot. There it is. We'll move this. Uh, this is 40, this is watts, this is 255, 214, and 170. And it's going to be inverse square. And we're going to go back to my uh, render one view, and then we'll go ahead and render. So in this scenario, because of how narrow that spotlight is, I'm getting very little wash on the wall. I don't have the arc on the wall, but as I come all the way straight down, I get a sharp circle on the ground. So this is more like a spotlight that you would use in like a stage, where it's lighting up just that one circle. So depending on the proportions of the spotlight, you can really vary what the light is doing. So in all of these examples and my use of the spotlight, these work really well for like recessed lights that are in the ceiling that are shining only in one direction. Sometimes you want a light that shines in more than one direction. And rather than create spotlights that are all going off in different directions, we can use a different style of light called a point light. And I'm going to show you that in a second. But before I can do a point light, I have to create the geometry to hold the point light in the first place. So I'm going to go back to Rhino. And I'm going to create a new file, large objects, inches, there we go. And so the next thing that I need to do is to create some kind of a floor lamp or a table lamp or something. And so I'll call this floor lamp. And then I'll go ahead and start to create the floor lamp. 
So we'll do it at 0, 0. And we'll say the base is, I don't know, a diameter of 1 foot and a height of 2, uh, one and a half inches. Switch this into shaded mode. Let's do another cylinder. Ah, I'm tired of doing that light. I've done that one too many times. Um, let me start with. This. Sorry, I'm creating a little arc here. Then I will rotate that up into three dimensions. Rotate 3D. Come on. Go. There it is. I can give myself a little circle at the bottom. It would help if my end snap was on. There we go. Um, diameter of one inch. And let me sweep one. Rail, cross-sectional curve. There we go. And then at this end here is where I need to build the actual shade for the light. Uh, and so let's do. I'm going to do a truncated cone here. We'll say this is, I don't know, 8 inches. And we'll go up 8 inches. And we'll do this one at 6 inches. For example, let me move it vertically by 5 inches. Oops, negative 5 inches. There we go. And then we can come back to my uh, shaded mode so we can kind of see it. I'm just trying to build something. And uh, I wanted to build something slightly different than what I've done in the past. So let's say it's like that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to explode this shape. And I'm going to get rid of the top and the bottom, like that. So now I've created whatever this is uh, as a lamp. I need to take the lamp frame and put it on a layer. So we'll change object layer. And we'll call this uh, stand, I guess. Then I'm going to have another thing called shade. So we'll change it to this layer. And we'll call this shade. Now in this scenario, I'm not overly worried about seeing the light bulb, because in all likelihood, it's going to be covered by the shade. So I'm not going to create an emissive material for this one. Instead, I'm going to concentrate on just the materials in the scene. So I'll go into my V-Ray options, or excuse me, my V-Ray material editor. I'll right click and I'll say load material. And we'll go ahead and use the titanium again. And I will right click and I'll say apply material to layer. And it's going to go on the stand layer. Then I need to create a material for the shade. And I've done it in the past where I've done a two-sided material and it's gotten complicated. Um, I think you can fake this really well with a very simple material. And so what I'll do is I'll right click on Scene Materials. I'll say Create Material Standard. And we'll call this Lampshade. And I'm going to do two things to it. The first thing I'll do is change the color. And the color I want to be the color of kind of the, the glow of the lampshade. So it's kind of one of these tannish colors in here. So 
something like that. Maybe the khaki if it's a little more uh, yellow, but somewhere in there. And I'll say OK. Then the transparency, I'm going to change dark gray is a little bit too much. So I'll come down here and I'll pick a dark-ish gray, maybe like that. And I'll say OK. And what I've created is a semi-transparent kind of tan material of some kind. Once I have that, I'll apply it to the lampshade. It may take some adjustments once we get into the final scene. So let me apply material to layer, and we'll put it on the shade. I will take the stand and the shade and put them on the floor lamp, or as sub-layers of the floor lamp. I'll get rid of the extra unnecessary layers. I'll go to File and then Save As. And this is now a floor lamp. I could probably call it an ugly floor lamp, um, but whatever. Oh, why not? Let's call it an ugly floor lamp. Ugly floor lamp. And click Save. Good news is none of you guys have to use this. You're going to create your own uh, in a little bit. So I have my floor lamp there. I'm going to jump back over into the final scene. Here it is. And I'll bring it in like, a, like I did the last one. I'll go to Edit, Blocks, Insert Block Instance. I will go find my ugly floor lamp. There it is. And I'll go ahead and say OK. I'm going to link it as a reference. And I'll say OK. Do I want to replace the existing materials? Yes. And then I'll drop it into the scene itself. Now I need to move this a little bit. So I drop it in at 0, 0, and then I'll move it. And I'll move it over a little bit like that. And so now I have the floor lamp in this room. Maybe it needs to be rotated, but this is a trial scene anyway. This floor lamp should be on its own layer. We'll create a layer called blocks. Go change object layer. On the lights, I'm going to create a new sublayer that's called point light which is going to be the type of light I'll use here. And at this point, I can actually turn off my can lights, because I don't need them to, to see what's happening here. So now I need to actually insert a light into this lampshade. And I'm, instead of using the spotlight this time, I'm going to go and create a point light. So I'll click on point light, and I'm going to drop that one right to the end of where that um, stand goes. And sometimes you have to look up at it to see it. And there it is. Once I have that light, again, I don't want it to intersect with any of the other geometry. Sometimes it's easiest to see this in the side views. Like that. So I will move it down just a bit. I might end up moving it over just a bit, too. This light then needs its properties adjusted. I'll come over to Properties. I'll go to my Light Properties. And this time it looks a little bit different, but many of the options are the same. So 255, 214, and 170. I'll change my units to Watts. I'll change my intensity to 40. My decay is already set as inverse square. I have numbers here. That means it's going to work. And we'll jump back into that render one view. So let me go to set view, render one. And we'll go ahead and give it a little test render. And so the difference between the spotlight and the point light is with the spotlight, it's going to shine in all directions, both up and down. And so I can see this a lot better on my. Uh, on my scene here. Let me go ahead and adjust this a little bit more so that you guys might be able to see it. So and let's see here. Let's change this to like 60. I also think I made my lampshade a little bit too transparent. So I'd go back here. This is where there's some back and forth on this. I'll pick the lampshade, 
go back into my V-Ray material editor, and we'll make this a little bit darker, a little bit even less transparent. There we go. Um, when I'm done, I'll save. I'll jump back into my sample scene here. I'll go to Edit, Blocks, Block Manager. And maybe it'll load. I'll go ahead and update that one. And then we can perform a render again. So hopefully this time you'll be able to see it a little bit better up on the screen. You guys will see this a lot better um, when you do it on your own anyway. But with this point light, because I have the, the shade there, the shade is casting a bit of a shadow on the wall, and you can see the shadow being cast there. But it's also allowing light to come through at the top, giving me the arc and light to come through at the bottom. So the light is going around in all directions. And so this is a different type of light that represents that style of light fixture. And so as you start to envision these light fixtures, you have to think about, you know, how's the light going to work? If I did a light fixture that was a wall-mounted fixture that was solid with one open end, a, a spotlight would be appropriate. If I did a light fixture that um, had a glass cylinder in it that was lighting out to all sides, then a point light would be more appropriate. And so you have to kind of think through that. If you were going to see the light bulb itself, you would need to do an emissive material with the light bulb. In that scenario, if we were seeing the light bulb itself, say in this lamp, it's a little bit trickier to do. If I were to modify that, come back here, let's get rid of this for a second. Um, Oops, sorry. Okay, so let's say I, I created a light fixture that was like that, for example. In this scenario, I would need some kind of a light underneath here, just like I did in the can light, um, if, I was, if I was to be underneath it enough to see the bulb. So it's a little bit dependent on where you're doing the render and whether you're going to be looking up to see the bulb or whether you're looking at it from the side. Also, is this a solid material or is it going to glow? In which case, that's going to change it as well. So you have to think through some of these options. And that's part of why I'm giving you today to, to experiment with these uh, different strategies. Uh, the one other thing that sometimes people want to do is they want to do things like a neon sign. And I can't resist creating a neon sign for you just so you can see how this stuff uh, works. Oh, I did a large object in inches again. Um, we can do some text. And so, sure, why not? We can do Rhino. Um, and I'll go ahead and say OK. There it is. I didn't want there to be a thickness. Hold on a second. And let's do a height of one foot. That does not look like one foot in height because the default is in inches, so it would have to be 12 inches. There we go. Um, and let me explode this. And that gives me the outline for it. Then I could create a 
cross-sectional curve that would represent the tube. So the diameter of maybe 0 0.375. Let me rotate 3D. Like that. In all reality, I would probably have to round the corners because neon has rounded corners, but you guys get where I'm going with this. This would be a sweep one. That would be my rail. That would be my neon. And it would create the tube for me. Let me take this and let me copy it. So there, same thing, sweep one. And I'm just going to do the R. You guys don't need to watch me do all of it. There we go. Rotate 3D. Stand it up. There it is. Move. 0, comma, 0, comma, 0. There we go. Now in this scenario, I'm going to be using the emissive material, the glow material. right? And so I would take this. I would make sure it's on its neon layer. So let's rename this to be neon. The rest of these don't really matter because I only have the neon. Uh, if you had multiple colors, you could do the neon in different colors. Um, and I will go into my V-Ray options, or excuse me, my V-Ray material editor. I'm going to right click and say create material standard. And we'll rename this to be neon. And just like I did with the light bulb, I'm going to create an emissive layer. So I'll right click on neon and say create layer emissive. And everything here is going to be the same as what I did for the emissive. So if we came back here, everything's going to be the same except for the emissive color. So 100 for the transparency, 155 for the col diffuse color, and 0 for the diffuse transparency. So I'll quickly go through and do that. That's 100, right? Yep, and 155. Those are already 0. But when it comes to the color this time, I'm going to pick the actual color of the neon, so maybe something like red, which is going to give me the glowing red. I still have to adjust the intensity, so we could go up to maybe 100. Maybe it's more than that. We'll see. I'm going to right click and apply the material to the layer. It's going to go on the neon layer. There we go. Then I will save this. And I'll click Save. I'll jump over into my scene here. And I want to place this on the wall, so I'll go to Edit, Blocks, Insert Block Instance. And I'll browse for my Neon R. Embed and Link. There it is. This needs to go up, so move vertical. And then move in this direction. And there it is. Now in this scenario, if I were to just render it, I would get some of the glow from the red. And you know what? I should turn off my other light here. So let me turn off my point light. Layer organization. Critical. All right, so in this scenario, we're not getting enough out of that neon. 
So I would need to increase that intensity. So I'd go back to my neon file. I'd go into my um, V-Ray material editor here, and I'd change that intensity. Maybe we'll go at like 500. And so I'll close it. I'll go to File and then Save. We'll jump back over here, and we'll go to Edit, Blocks, Block Manager. Wait for Rhino to crash. <laughs> and then we need to update. Perfect. And we'll try that render right now and see if it starts to show up. Yeah, it's just barely showing up. A little bit of red glow. You guys won't see it there. Um, so you'd probably need to push that value up even further. Um, I'm going to override it here so I don't have to go back and forth. And it's still not reading correctly. So I'm going to have to sort out why that's not reading correctly, um, because it should be doing it. So anyway, I'll, I'll come back and I'll, I'll double check that. But you guys don't need to see me playing with it, um, because for whatever reason, it's not showing up on the projector. Uh, the one other thing that you can do with these kinds of, of lights is you can install something called a rectangular light. Uh, I want to show you a rectangular light, but I'm not going to overemphasize it today, and I'm not actually going to encourage you to use it today. We will cover it again in two classes. Um, the problem with a rectangular light um, is that understanding what the wattage is on a rectangular light is very difficult because it's dependent on the size of the rectangle. So if I have a small little rectangular light, my wattage has to be small. If I have a big rectangular light, I have to have a bigger wattage because that wattage is distributed over the surface area. Um, so the rectangular light is available right here. And with the rectangular light, it's pretty simple. All you're doing is you're creating uh, a length of light. And then let me do this vertically. Like that, for example. This light here is going the wrong direction. It's going inside of the wall. I'll flip it. Oops. If I can type flip, there we go. Now the arrow is pointing out. I need to move this so that it is where my neon is, like that. And I also need to move it so it's not contained within the wall. There, something like that. Then I'll go into my properties of my light. Same things here. Color, though, because it's a neon light, would be red. This would be in watts. I'm going to start it at maybe, yeah, we'll start at 30. Uh, Double-sided means, do you want it to go both directions, or do you want it to go in one direction? In this case, I do want it to go both directions because I want it to shine out, but also on the wall. Uh, I want it to be invisible so I can't see it. Uh, the rest of the, the options are all fine. I'll go ahead and jump over into render here, and we'll try a test render and see if it shows up. One of the things that you'll also find about it is that, uh, yeah, it's showing up. It's a little bit too big, but it's glowing against the wall right now. Um, one of the things that you'll find when it comes to the uh, lighting settings in V-Ray is that you'll do a lots and lots of test renders. You adjust the setting, look at it. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Go back, do it again. To go back, do it again. Um, and so in that case, like I didn't like it, so I might have to scale the light down so it's not so big. Um, I have to kind of play around with it a little bit. Moving it away from the wall would also help a, a bit. So if I moved it away from the wall and then did my render, Yeah, there you go. Now it's mimicking more like, yeah, you guys can't even see it. Uh, it's mimicking more like what the red light or glow would be from a neon. I don't understand why my, my R isn't showing up. It's showing up as black. So I have to sort that one out. So anyway, 
I know these were kind of a variety of different distractions. I'm trying to show you different strategies for making different kinds of lights. That's the point. Today, for exercise 220, I'm going to ask you to create at least two different lights. Ideally, an indoor light and an outdoor light. We're going to use these lights in your scene next class. So spend your time, create them, make good quality lights. Um, and then you'll upload uh, renderings and um, basically follow the exercise renderings in the files uh, for your lights, etc. Um, we will, you guys will eventually get an assignment where you're going to be building an interior and an exterior light. I'm not giving it to you yet because today is about learning and I don't want you focused on, oh, I have to build the perfect light. I want you to try all of these lights. I want you to create something with a spotlight, create something with a point light, figure out how they work, figure out the settings, realize that the bulb is dead and have to create it again. So this is about uh, learning the lights uh, more than anything else. So you will get that assignment. It's coming. You can think about it, but don't start on it just yet. Um, if you finish today, if you create your light fixtures, spend the rest of the time working on your actual uh, retreat because we're getting to the point where now we're going to start doing different renders and the further along you are, the better it's going to be. Okay. Any other global questions? Now, I apologize that my, my neon wasn't working. I'll figure out what's wrong, and I'll show you the end result in a little bit.